Good afternoon. Pleasure welcoming you all in the virtual second edition of Orange City Literature Fest, which is organized by SGR Knowledge Foundation. I am Aditi Mishra, your anchor for this session. There will be a buzzer at the end of the session. This session is the fourth session of the day, and the session is of 40 minutes. We will be now discussing about perils of corporate life and open to other ideas with Mr. Ashutosh Mishra. Ashutosh sir is a life coach, motivational speaker, and public published author. He has over 20 years of corporate experience in global banks like Goldman Sachs and ANZ. Ashutosh sir is an avid reader, blogger, and writes regularly on Quora. He also likes to run, exercise, and exercise. Ashutosh sir has published two books with very reputed publishers. First book, Happiness is All We Want, is a self-help book helping people live a healthy and fulfilling life. The second book, Banker's Game, is a roller coaster story of corporate professions and corporate policies. Uh -huh. Though, through his book, blogs, and talk, Ashutosh sir has motivated thousands of people to take charge in their life and work towards realizing their dreams. Sir is an alumnus of CLRI Jamshedpur and IIT Delhi. We welcome you, sir. Now, you. I shall introduce the moderator of the session, Dr. Rosina Rana Mam. She is a seasoned counselor and a life coach. Currently, she is associated with Rysoni Group of Institutions as, as manager, training, and development. She is also the director of counseling center set up in Nagpur. After completing her PhD in clinical psychology, she has helped a large number of people, including 30,000 students, 5,000 teachers and 500 parents and many work professionals create their own runway to peace and success. In her professional legacy, she holds many awards and accolades to her credit. Some of the most prominent awards, including Outstanding Expert Training and Psychological Counselor by Higher Education Ministry, Government of Telangana. Nation Builder Award by Rotary Club of Nagpur and the Women Achievers Award by the Islamia Helping Society. We welcome you, ma'am, and I would like to hand over the session to you, ma'am. Thank you, Aditi. Thank you very much. And a very, very, very warm welcome to everybody who is watching here. And Ashutosh Mishra, it's a pleasure to have you on this talk today. Ashutosh, the author of Banker's Game. The title, such an attractive title it is. He talks about the roller coaster ride and he's going to take us for a roller coaster ride today. Uh, he talks about uh, money and emotions and Nitin, the main character of this, this story, how the story revolves around him with many with three characters majorly uh, who goes through a lot of ups and downs and here the corporate world as all the students uh, keep hearing about this and keep thinking about it, how the world is. It is definitely different than the world that we live in and uh, with all the emotions and a lot of money talks. A lot of money talks. Here we have Ashutosh Mishra and uh, I'm sure you're going to enjoy this session. Uh, to begin with, Talking about the egos and prides and games people play during corporate uh, life. Uh, Ashutosh, what made you select this subject and uh, the topic is so attractive? So tell us something more about it. Okay, uh, thanks a lot for this great introduction, Diti and Rosina, and setting the tone for the session. Uh, really pleased to be part of this uh, initiative, and I think it is going to benefit everybody who is going to uh, participate today. So coming to this book, uh, Banker's Game, I'll just like to show you this book first. Uh, this is the book, Banker's Game, which uh, Rosina talked about. So as it says, Banker's Game, but actually it is uh, more like all the corporate games which are played across industries, across sectors, because the corporate culture, corporate politics is pretty much, uh, you know, goes on similar lines across industries. It can vary from organization to organization, but certain basic aspects which are the same. So as you saw my in, in my introduction, I've had a long corporate career of about 21 years now. 
uh, worked with about five large uh, global banks, Goldman Sachs, Deutsche Bank, ANZ, Indian banks like ICICI. So, you know, working in these banks, uh, what I've noticed is that uh, people, uh, you know, go through their uh, careers or corporate lives and a lot of people struggle through the issues which they face. There are very few people who are able to make sense out of things and they do well and they're able to maneuver everything to their advantage. But a large majority of us, when we, you know, when we are studying, we actually do not prepare ourselves for what is going to hit us when we start working. And that is the thing which I've seen year after year. And, you know, myself, when I joined this uh, game, it took me about five to eight years to just get a little bit of hang of it. My father is from administrative services. So I was never exposed to the corporate world while I was in my, uh, you know, growing up years. And uh, the management trainees, years after years, they join and they find it very difficult to adjust. And they, they don't know, they feel, you know, they just come to office, they'll do their work and everything else will be taken care of. So, so the main objective of this book was to, you know, to show to the young professionals, you know, what they can expect when they enter into the corporate world, how they can maneuver this to their advantage, because corporate politics is a necessary evil. It is just like, you know, politics in democracy. When you have a democracy, you can say that China is doing well because they don't have democracy and they are you know, autocratic. India is a democracy. It has got its advantages, but with the advantages come the disadvantages, which is the politics. Same thing applies in a company. There's a lot of politics and interpersonal dynamics. So the, 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 the thing that motivated me was to help people understand, you know, what kind of dynamics, interpersonal dynamics, especially. And even if you're not a corporate person, even if in your family life or in your general life, you can learn a lot. And Rosina, you are a psychologist yourself. You will understand what I'm talking about. That was the main top objective of this. Uh, second objective, which made me uh, write this book, was that uh, I've seen lots of ups and downs. And financial market, especially in cyclical industry, we are going from one boom to the first, next bust. And so what I saw was that when we go from the, in boom times, people do very well and they are very successful. And they really fly on cloud nine. But when the bust hits them, then most of the people do, do not know how to manage. Because you know, you, everybody can do well when the market is good. But when the, actually the bad things happen, when the scams takes place and when the market, you know, crash happens, at, that is a time when which actually tests your skill, your patience, your resilience. So that is one thing which I have brought about in this book, wherein, you know, we go through the boom times of 2004 to 2008. And then there is a Lehman Brothers crash in US and which actually hits the Indian financial markets as well, which not many people are aware of. So, so that was the, the second idea behind writing this book. Okay, very well said. It is a necessary evil. Uh, it is evil, but it is necessary. So uh, thank you for giving that perspective. And uh, since you spoke about money and the market crash, I will first touch a little bit upon money and then we'll go more into deeper into corporate life. Uh, it is said that uh, money is not everything, but you have enough before you say this, before you talk this nonsense, you have enough of it. So uh, what do you think about money and this uh, volatile world of of money business? Yeah, yeah. So money is uh, very well said. Money, people will say money is not everything and, you know, look, out, go after your dreams. Don't think about money and everything. So money is definitely very important and whatever we may say, but at some point in time, uh, every day in our life, we have to think about money. How is our finances? How is our earning? Because uh, whether we, again, it is a necessary evil, whether you like it or not, money is the lubricator which keeps the modern economy going. Uh, for you need it for, you know, meeting your basic needs, necessities, for meeting your challenges, your family responsibilities, your own desires and dreams. So it is, it is very important. But again, just to put things in perspective, money is again very much, it is like a byproduct of what you do. So if you make money as your direct goal in everything that you do, then you may or may not be that successful. Yeah, so you talk is, about happiness also. So, so happiness is all that we want. So along with money, we want also happiness and success, yes. of course. Yes. Correct. If you only run after money in a very, very uh, narrow sense, then you may not get the happiness. But at the same time, you, you know, you uh, develop a career, you come up, you develop some skills, you do productive work that gives you satisfaction that earns you money as a byproduct and you are able to add value to society. And also the other part, which I talk about in my first book, happiness is all we want is that when you run after money and your, you know, desires and dreams, 
they are very important and i always encourage youngsters you know to go for it and dream big dream whatever material things they want but at the same time learn to draw a line you know there is always a ethical line to what extent you will go to earn money yeah as long as it is ethical it is something meaningful that you are doing it is all fine but just to take excuse of money and do anything unethical or do whatever comes that is not something which is right at the same time uh, when you run after your money and your material uh, desires and dreams do not neglect yourself you know a lot of people say okay let me throw my health uh, to the window and let me just do this at the age of 45 or 50 when i have all the money and bungalows and flats in the world then i will care about my health that is too late you cannot buy it back at that time so just keep things in perspective money is definitely very important we cannot uh, you know uh, downplay its importance so ashutosh talks about money and also success and happiness and health so so everything is properly blended when he talks uh, so my next question is what hits the hardest for students especially those who those who are into corporate world those who are going to enter the corporate world what hits the hardest when they join the corporate world yes yes so so first thing that is there with when we are students we have a very idealistic view of the world mm. you know we feel that uh, i have done my uh, uh, degree i have learned my technical skills i'll go to office uh, my company will give me certain xyz job i'll do my work properly well and i'll come back home and everything is taken care of it is not like that your work what you do the technical value add what you do at work is only a aspect of what you are doing it is very important aspect no doubt but beyond that there is a big world of because all the organizations as of now till machines take over they are composed of people right so when you go to office when you go to the corporate world the biggest thing that hits people or the new joinees is the interpersonal dynamics in your school college in your family the interpersonal dynamics is very different to some extent people are exposed to a competitive dynamics when they are doing an mba or a professional course but largely people are not they do not think that they will be you know in this kind of competitive atmosphere where everybody will be competing with each other uh, ironically in a modern organization we are supposed to work together to achieve the goals but at the same time people compete a lot because as you grow more and more senior the number of positions reduces and it is a typical corporate pyramid so at every level there is a lot of competition to and this is what hits people they do not know how to manage this personal dynamics to their advantage in my book banker's game you will see that there is a very difficult boss which is the main central character of the book which is nitin he has got three members in his team now it is the same boss with similar difficult personality for all three of them but each of them manages it in a different manner and that gives you hints about you know how you can play to the situation which is there rather than cribbing and crying and complaining that you know my company culture is not good or my boss is not a great person you have to see how you have to use it to your advantage because the company or the boss is not going to change for you as one person they are going to be what they are it is you who have to modify your way of working and play to the tune play to the and play the game basically you know you talk about games people play it is a very famous psychological book yes yes i have read that book so it is the games ultimately and you have to learn the game the sooner you learn it while you are in campus expose yourself to such literature the sooner you learn it the better it is and you are better prepared to you know do well in your job so so tell us how to prepare so there are uh, uh, there are sweet talkers sweet talkers so they will kind of do lot of uh, sweet talking and buttering to the bosses what is uh, uh, how how do really people go up the ladder is it the sweet talking or is it the real skill and the talent and hard work right so in my 20 years i have seen all kind of people progress for example i'll just again give you the example of politics there are all different kind of politicians around you there are people right from lalu prasad yadav on one and one extreme to narendra modi on the other extreme and the tactics and the skills that they employ is a complete you know plethora of things that they employ similarly in corporate world everybody has to play to their strength first of all for example if you are technically very strong if you are a hard worker that is your core skill at the same time you will see that the other person sitting next to you manages to take away the credit right why not by doing much lesser work 
So rather than complaining about this situation, what you have to understand is that your hard work and your skill is only one aspect. You also need to learn from the other people. You need to also develop the skills which you are already seeing that other people are benefiting from. So being nice to your bosses, doing a little bit of flattery, just once in a while praising, you know, what this is amazing imported tie that you're wearing, nice shoes. So all these things you will find in the book as well, ironically. Not okay. many books talk about these. So these are very small things. You meet the CEO and before a presentation, you have a small talk, you know, oh, really like your shoes. The guy feels really good. So he's already on your side. So even, so if, even, person, even if you don't like, even if you don't like the shoe or yeah. even if you don't like, still you go ahead and do that. Yes, yes. You need not like everything. And as a married person, you know, right? You have okay. to play. <laughs> That's a good advice for all the married people as well. To be married <laughs> also. To be married also. Right? So, yes, yes. These are, so what I'm saying is, as a so and on the other hand, you might be a sweet talker. You might be a complete flatterer and good, you know, person at uh, establishing rapport with people. But if your technical skills are not your strength, you need to develop that as well. You cannot just say that my flattery and my sweet talking will take me high as much as possible because you don't know when it will hit you. So what I'm saying is that all these aspects are important. You identify your core strength, but at the same time, develop the other skills which are required. You cannot say that I am like this and I will stay like this and let the world give me what I deserve. It doesn't happen like that. So in my book, I give you example of one introvert person. Typically, the introverts are the ones who want to just sit in a corner, do their work, go home. They don't want to intermingle with people. And then they say, you know, these people, they all go out for smoke and they do all the office, office gossip. I don't get to know anything. And these are the people who are getting promoted. So the person actually works on his personality to be a little bit more open, to be a little bit more outgoing, to develop some social skills. So it is very, very important. You, know, you just cannot keep on complaining that I'm like this only and I will stay like this. So in your in your career, in your experience, Ashutosh, have you come across anybody who does a sweet talking, who is also skillful, who is talented, but still he is not promoted or he doesn't he doesn't get his worth? OK, so there are a lot of people, as I said, the corporate world is a pyramid, right? So ultimately, if 100 people start at the base after 20 years, there will be only two or five at the top. Right. So, for example, in my career itself, I have seen a lot of a lot of us started at the same time, and few of us have just gone way beyond my what whatever level I am. But I see a large number of people who have actually fallen on the wayside. Mm -hmm. They didn't get the they didn't want to continue in the same field, or they felt demotivated, or they could not continue because of certain reason. So it happens all the time. But the, the thing is that you have to keep yourself motivated. It is one challenge after the other. It is just like life. For example, if you are preparing for your competitive exam, you might feel that you will get a 500 rank in IIT, but you may get a 5000 rank. But in your eyes, you have done all the hard work, you have put in all the you know, all the work. So similar thing happens in the corporate world as well. But nothing is end of the world. Luckily, when you are in corporate world, you get paid for doing the work. When you are preparing for IIT like I was, you pay somebody and you do, you do the slogging also. Mm -hmm. The good thing about the corporate world is it runs the livelihoods of millions of people, right? So it is very, very important. And it yeah. is like one challenge after the other. You may not have done well in one challenge. Try to see what you can change. You want to change your company. You want to change your job profile. You want to change your function. You want to develop your technical skills. All those possibilities are there. And people do it, all these things while they're working. It need not be that I will leave this job and find for a better, find a better job. Right. So that is not yeah, the yeah. you have to continue to face the challenge. At the same time, you have to evolve as a human being, as a technical expertise person. So what is more important, hard skills or soft skills? As you go forward in your career, the soft skills start becoming more and more important because I'll give you very and this is very logical. Soft skills, if you have at a student level also, it is very, very good. No doubt, but when you start, typically most of the people lack in the soft skills. They have good technical or uh, bookish knowledge. So what happens is initially when you join, the company gives you the work which needs more technical work. As you grow senior, you become a team manager. You have to manage people, right? 
so managing not only your bosses but managing your team members managing your peers all these things require soft skills the way you will manage your team member or your subordinate is different the way you will manage or interact with your peers is different and the way the way you will interact with your seniors is very different the way you interact with outside stakeholders which is your customers media that is very different so ultimately you will have to start developing soft skills in all these areas give it a very careful thought just do not be under the illusion that you know i have done my work the world will come to me and, you know i'll be taken care of so it is it is very important to develop the soft skills as you go more and more senior invest more time and effort in your sure. soft skills development in fact in, my wife is a soft skills trainer and right now she is doing a seminar on the in another room for a group of people so she always after our life to keep working on our soft skills including you know your everything your clothing so in my book people when they go for interviews how they dress up how they you know so one might say you know what is this i should be valued for my technical skills the kind of suit tie or uh, shoes i am wearing why should this impact my performance but that is the way the world is you have to understand how the way how the world works and you have to adjust accordingly so it is said na dikhta hai wo bikta hai exactly Simple. so uh, not just your hard skills but also you need to have a proper presentation of Correct. your hard, uh, as well as soft skills so right soft skills, just just to add the soft skills will get you in they will give you the opportunity and the hard skills will help you develop or deliver on the opportunity okay great right yes well said uh, what we see in our is ashutosh is uh, uh people are shifting their job very often they don't stick to one company so what do you think i mean did you also experience something like this and if at all then what is your advice to stay in one company and just wait for your growth to happen or you keep on moving from uh job to job job hopping which is called see so, yeah, so job hopping has become a culture uh, no doubt earlier days uh, you know when uh, our parents time people used to join one company one organization and work there for 35 40 years and retire in my career of 21 years i have worked in companies from 2 years to 8 years uh, my current job is about 8 years i am there so i am pretty stable that's what now uh, it is again a very subjective thing you know if you just want to change your job just for the sake of it for very small issues for a 10 20% increment or you don't like the coffee machine then it is not good but right. there is something which is really really uh, wrong about the place something is really bothering you it is hampering your functioning as an individual it is affecting you at a psychological level then i would say you should go for a change so is it only then is it only then you have to uh, think of changing a job yeah so what what i have seen in my career is that there are people who tend to stay at one place and fight out the challenges and that mm-hmm. is lead, leads to more development as a person as a, and as a professional because if you see a slightest challenge and you run away from that that does not give you a chance to develop that doesn't make you strong that doesn't give you resilience but if you face a small challenge you face a difficult boss and you do your best to adjust to that and make your way that when you come out of that you are stronger so what happens when you feel that you are more smarter more intelligent than your boss that i can tell you you will always feel that so take it from <laughs> me <laughs> <laughs> you will always feel that and you will always feel that why is this guy getting paid more than me and why is he doing less work than me i have been as a, as a boss i have worked many years as a subordinate i have worked many years so that is always the case but the idea is that you have to understand that you are in a particular situation or a slot which you know by chance or by destiny you have happened to be there so just do your best in that and try to move to the next level do not worry about what the other person is doing what he or she is getting there's a lot of luck factors which play out for everyone some people can get plain lucky it is so easy sorry sorry go ahead yeah so you have to recognize that there is something or luck and chance as well in this life everything does not work perfectly logically or the logic may not be apparent somebody when he he or she becomes a boss they would have done something because of which they've got that position you may not be uh, maybe that. not done anything but there is some politics or some favoritism or some nepotism yes, uh, do you think that this exists correct then favoritism and nepotism exists 
now bollywood everybody is talking about it after the big event that happened in june but even politics you look at state after state the son is considered to be the you know rightful owner of the throne after the family after the you know the father right so that is a part of life that is part of human psyche that is how it is you know when you earn something you create something you want to pass it out pass it off to your offspring you do not want to pass on your hard earnings to somebody else so that is the way it will be there will be nepotism favoritism there is lot of give and take under the table behind the scene that is happening you may not be able to make the logic out of it yes so it is easier said that uh, let the things happen the way it is happening you focus on your work but it is quite uh, upsetting and frustrating sometimes for students uh, that uh, things people who are maybe not so qualified maybe they are not so talented but still they are going up the ladder so any any suggestion to students on how they can uh, really stick to the place and uh, wait in the wings yeah so i would say do not wait indefinitely give things some time if you have done some good work give it some time for it to get noticed do your bit as i said you know soft skill so your self promotion and self marketing is a big soft skill which lot of people have and they benefit so i would i typically advise people on my linkedin post if you see you know how to play the corporate politics part i would say 50% of time you should be spending in your hard work right about 30% of time you have to uh, spend in promoting the work that you have done in letting people know what you have done and about 20% of your time you have to work in managing the people around you right so the work consists of 50% yes it is it is 50% because if you just do 100% of your work and go home then the rest and you don't take care of rest of the things then nothing will happen so oh, that's a very good suggestion i suppose and a very clear ratio very yeah. clear ratio of how much uh, efforts you need to put towards your work how much in promoting your work or talking about your work and yes. how much to manage people so i think that's a very good piece of advice for everyone uh, moving forward what do you think how to manage with the work life balance because it's a lot of pressure the time talk about the time uh, that corporate asks from you so there are people who go into academics they become teachers and lecturers mm -hmm. and there are people who go into corporate and there are people who join who want to start a business they want to become an entrepreneur so between these three uh, worlds that we talk about getting into academics where you get a lot of holidays and you have a fixed time getting into a corporate world and starting your own business mm. yeah so very very good question as far as professional life is concerned professional people or anybody who is in their working age group you know which is roughly i would say 20 to 50 years of age group uh, and you are definitely having lot of pressure in your profession whether you are doing a startup whether you are doing a corporate job or your family business there is lot of pressure so in, in, incidentally this was the topic of my first book which is uh, you know happiness is all we want which is which basically says that happiness is not about just getting whatever you want happiness is all about enjoying what you have right, right. so if you right. have this notion that i will become the ceo one day or i will have a unicorn startup one day and that is a time when i will start enjoying my life that is a time when i will start taking care of myself that is now it, how, how it works typically as you rightly said rosina people are under pressure time is limited there's only 24 hours for everyone and the corporate world sucks out a big chunk of time from you again if you're feeling bad about your corporate job think about the startups you know these typical legendary startups started by people like you know steve jobs elon musk they are sometimes you read they are working 20 hours in a day so where do they get time so corporate world is not that bad okay it is something in between if you are doing your family business again you do not know when the work starts and when it ends they work on sundays also so whether it is family business your corporate world or your startup world you have to find time for taking care of yourself and happiness is a function of your ability to enjoy what you have my favorite example is if i buy a mercedes at the age of 50 my back does not permit me to drive i have spondylitis slip disc or whatever then what is the use of that car true i'll be sitting in the back seat i may as well sit in the back seat of a maruti or a uber or ola right so the way i do it i tell people students as well is 
you have to make taking care of yourself a part of the habit and this is very similar to the way you do savings you know the way you to do savings and i'm from finance and we talked about money a little bit in the beginning if you have 1 lakh rupees salary and you say i will save 10000 rupees every month how do you go about saving that you have to set aside that 10000 rupees on the day you get the salary if you say i will go through the month i will meet all my expenditures and then i will save this 10000 you will never save it it will never be enough by 25th of the month you would have spent 1 lakh rupees completely so maybe more you, maybe more yes, <laughs> your trade so similarly for health and well being you have 24 hours you say one hour i have to give to myself this one hour i will take away before anything else comes in right true now so again just one caveat here that when you join your job you are a junior you are a new person it is difficult to you know stick to this kind of whims and fancies that you know come what may i am going for my jogging i am going to gym people may not like it at your job so that time, that is a crucial time of first three to five years when it becomes a little bit tricky. For example, I'll give you a very interesting story. One of the banks where I was working, the guy in our team, so we had a very difficult boss at that time. So one of my colleagues, he told my boss, you know, uh, I went for cricket practice today at 6 a.m. So the boss gave, gave him a stare, you know, and I, I knew that something bad has happened now. From next day, that guy got started getting so much work that he was in office till 12 or 1 in the night and he didn't get any chance to go for his cricket practice. So, so do things, so, try to be very clear what you want to tell in office, what you don't want to tell in office. Always try to act busy. That is one of the skills which I can share with you. Okay. <laughs> That's I'm very busy. I'm not getting time. I cannot do anything. If you flaunt your happiness, people may, you know, take it away from you. Okay. That's again a very good piece of advice. Yes. Look busy. Show that you are busy. That's good. That's good. I think so. Yes. Do we have any questions, Aditi? If you can check, uh, I'm not able to check the chat. Or I'll just look in the chat if we have any questions here. No, I don't think there's any questions. Yeah. Guys, if you have any questions, you can just post it here. And uh, how to avoid making enemies? Can, can, we, uh, can we say that uh, there are no real friends in corporate world? On the whole, in general, you can say that. Because as I said just in my previous example, uh, you have to keep your personal private uh, life as well as the corporate life a little separate. Now with the advent of your WhatsApp and you're working from home and everything, the, both the things are overlapping. So you, from time perspective, yes, you might be doing some personal work in office time, you might be doing official work in your personal time. There is a big, bit overlap. But in terms of what you share with everyone, in terms of what information you share, do not be very open on a personal basis at office. Because if you share a lot of your personal details, you know, those things can come back to haunt you later. So try to maintain the decorum. Try to maintain the decorum. There, you will make friends when you are working. You will make enemies as well, there is, it is completely unavoidable. You will have both kinds of people, but do not hate your enemies too much and do not love your friends too much. Because ultimately, whether it is your enemy or your friend at work, you have to work with the same people. I know people, I know people that who have fought very badly, very bitterly with someone, and next day they have spoken to them as if nothing has happened. So that mm -hmm. is also a skill. If you get into a fight or a spat or even a silent, you know, uh, friction and you make it apparent on your face and you start acting heavy and it starts affecting your work, it is not good for you. Leave alone the next person, you know, it is not good for you. You have to have that maturity to say that, okay, I had a fight yesterday, it was a bad day, move on. It is not forever, maybe after three, four, five years, the other person will be in a different direction, you will be somewhere else. True, true. So uh, no good, no uh, real friends and no real enemies. Yes, right. But, but you do make but you do make good friends in corporate world. For example, I'm still friends or in touch with people with whom I worked 20 years back. But that is happens at a different time frame, and you are not working in the same organization, so there are no conflicts. There's nothing to compete about, right? So when you leave a company, you still carry relationships with you. Uh, talk something about the ethics, the ethic part of it. 
is it uh, if you see somebody is cheating for example if you see somebody is cheating in the in the uh, while you are working and how do we really uh, you are not able to kind of uh, come to terms with that so how do you deal with it excellent question uh, this is really great uh, so i have talked about ethics in my book bankers game as well as i said when the times are good when things are happening people do all kind of things to make money and when the bust happens then you know as warren buffet has said you know when the tide goes down then you know who's who was swimming naked mm-hmm. so it's exactly the same thing you know like ketan mehta scam the series is there on amazon right now you can watch it or whichever channel so similar things happen when the times are good and things are booming people do lot of excesses in terms of their ethics they push their ethical boundaries but in my suggestion when i speak to b school students or university students i always advise them to draw a line at lo at least what you do is in your control please do not get into any unethical zone for doing whatever whoever asks you biggest example i can give you live example today this case of riya chakravarti and sushant singh rajput i am not on anybody's side but it looks to me that the girl was mostly arranging the drugs for the for her lover right for her boyfriend and in that case now whatever she but she did arrange she did do something illegal it may be for the sake of a relationship or whatever so today whatever she might say she will be she will have to face the consequences similarly when you are in a company you cannot say that my boss told me to do this or my promoter you are a grown up person always draw the line if there is something hardcore illegal unethical thing being told to you please walk away from that your job is not worth the ethical sacrifice or ethical compromise if you do it remember you will have to pay the consequences that is one number 2 if you are not being asked to do anything bad or negative or wrong but you see it happening on the side then what are your choices at that time it becomes a subjective thing if you are working in a company for example i work in companies which give me a whistle blowing channel which have a proper you know secret hotlines wherein anybody can call anonymously and they can report an ethical behavior without any consequences then please take that recourse but if you are working in a general company where these systems and processes are not very strong try to look out try to move out of that place as soon as possible you may not be uh, comfortable enough or strong enough to take over those people to take on those people you know who are indulging into unethical behavior so for your own safety for your own well being try to move out of that situation i will not advise you to go to a police station and you know you never know who is in hands and gloves with whom so as a new person try to avoid getting into such situation do not do anything unethical yourself if you see other people doing it take an informed call keeping your safety and well being in mind okay i think we have uh, just two three minutes left aditi yes so um, so just last piece of advice from you ashutosh yeah last piece of advice from me i mean uh, read my books and uh, you know get back to me with your questions and your issues and both these books are definitely i'm not saying this because i'm promoting the book or marketing the book but i genuinely genuinely feel i was a banker I, there was no reason for me to you know get uh, 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 burn midnight oil to write these books in addition to my job but i wrote this because i genuinely felt that i can help the youngsters people especially in the age group of 20 to 30 years of age group when they can take corrective actions in their life in their career and then when they reach my stage in life then they don't regret anything i think wonderful i think wonderfully explained wonderfully uh, um, given the advices very very easy to use and uh, very sensible very lot of wisdom there so thank you ashutosh it was really a pleasure talking to you on this subject and i'm sure there are many students and there are many people who are watching this uh, are who are already into corporate world will definitely benefit with whatever advices that you have given over to you thank aditi you. thank you rojina thank you aditi thanks a lot thank you so much sir for this wonderful session and also thank you dr rosina ma'am for moderating this session thank you so much sir for motivating students like me who are about to enter the corporate life and uh, your uh, your um, speech was uh, re- really very motivative and informative also for students like us i also extend my gratitude to the publisher jacko publishing house on behalf of orange city literature festival we sincerely express our gratitude towards your acceptance for the session and knowledge shared with us 
Our next session is from 3 p.m. with Alka Pandey on Let's Talk About Shakti 51 Pitas. Thank you. So viewers, please stay connected with us. Thank so you. thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Twenty years of existence. Two universities. Twenty-three educational institutes. Offering a hundred and thirty-seven courses. Sony Group of Institutions, a vision beyond.